like, all right, good afternoon. It's uh, January 25th, 2020 here in Chicago. My name's Elvin, also known as the Foxy, and if you're tuning to us live, uh, this is, uh, we just saw the Division Three team take on a 2-0 victory um, against Bradley. But uh, in the meantime, at the same time, there was actually a Division One game going on against Ferris State University. So um, those games have already concluded, but for the sake of uh, non-spoilers, I'm going to cast a game uh, not knowing the score. And then if you're watching us live or, you know, feel free to chip in with some side commentary. But this is uh, probably going to be a much more looser of a cast, as per se, um, as opposed to what I normally do for my usual stint. Um, in terms of picks bands, obviously that's not going to be done because the game files I already have exist, so I'll just list them out. So uh, again, this is, oops, I forgot to change the uh, team names. It's Illinois Tech Division A, not C. So again, Division A versus FSU Crimson. IIT took uh, blue side for game one. So let's just hop ourselves right into it. Uh, shoot, I forgot to change the logo title too. I'll do that real quick. Give me a sec, everyone. Appreciate everyone's patience. Alright, here we go. Oh, my tag, see wall. Uh, that's repetitive. Alright, that's better. Uh, I guess I can make it bigger. And then let's check the, uh, game plan so I don't just show off everything. Uh, a little bit scuffed, but it'll do. Alright, there we go. Good enough. Um, let's see any of this other stuff I need to bother with these files. Just cleaning up a couple of things. Give me a second. Got the logo title and turn back on my sound and I think I'm good to go all right appreciate everyone's patience as I grind my way through all of these small s nuances uh, let's see anything else uh, I can move where's the black bar I used to have a black bar in here. Where did it go? That's not it. Did I delete it? <laughs> Maybe. Sorry for the delay for those watching. Um, hmm. I thought I used to have a black bar in here. Alright, give me a second. I'll Maybe it's because of spectating versus watching watching a replay file that's making the difference. I can't remember. Um, all right, hold on. I'll just do it by doing this. Uh, I guess we make do it with it like this. Still looking really janky. I, I should just make a new scene next time. Note to self. Sorry about that. Hide it here. I'm done. All right, let's just go for it. If anyone's watching this live, just let me know if, it's, if like it's actually impossible to deal with. But um, I think I've made the scene to the point that it's actually viewable between both parties. So apologies for that. Okay. Let's get it to ourselves. So again, this is IIT on the blue side. We've got True, Five on the Irelia, Blitzkrieg, Trundle, Divine on Syndra, Zayan at Misfortune, and Boom Bang, Leona support. From FSU, it's Sizzling, Sizzling Pizza on the uh, York, FSU, Savage on the Hecarim, Zareth with Carmalman27, Rewa on Kaisa, and AJ Int. 007 on the Nautilus. Okay. Sounds good. 
Again, so for those that are watching this for the first time, this is C LOL. So as opposed to CSL, this is the actual uh, league sanctioned by Riot. So uh, we'll have to see, you know, how things go. Uh, it's going to be IIT here on the blue side. Both teams are going to be heading their way out onto the rift. Looking like uh, IIT is going to be going for the five man approach. FSU looking like they want to go for initial invade, checking out the tri bush, but they're going to see Zayn. He's going to instantly put a ward down there in the tri. And uh, none the what? None the no issues there. Interesting with Trundle support, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I mean, Leona level two is very fun to play against. Uh. Or it's not fun to play against if you if you're still level one in the bot side. But Nautilus with hook potential kind of depends on who we landed on. I think if we landed on Leona, she can probably take the brunt of it if she's got her W up. But uh, yeah, again, it's all on that level two. We'll have to see. Um, Zareth versus Syndra, not too much to comment on that matchup. But it is going to look like Hecarim's going to opt for the uh, first clear on the uh, red buff here in the top side as opposed to IIT going with the their red buff here in the bot side but Hecarim with red does help things I think as opposed to the uh, blue star it's gonna be a fast clear there that will have uh, INT coming out of the gates um, FSU deciding to not go for the waves right off the star probably just to give the false impression that uh, they're not in the that they helped leash the blue buff for the Hecarim, but um, a little bit of a first clear here. We're going to be seeing the Yorick in his nice little cat costume uh, facing off against True here on that Irelia. Divine and the Zareth sharing some blows. It's going to be a level 2 pretty much at the same time for True and Sizzling Pizza. Both popping open their corrupting pots and level two advantage there for AJ and the Kaisa uh, for Rewa. Zayn hitting a level two of her own now. She's gonna be putting on the Q and leveling up the uh, Q as her second uh, second level. Yeah, uh, Hecarim's gonna be finishing off the blue buff here, double buff now with the uh, Scuttle gonna be spawning quite shortly. Looks like he, like, like he wants to go for an invade of his own. Pretty simultaneous between both sides, but Hecarim actually looks like he's gonna be leaning towards the invade here. Divine is going to have a nice flash to be able to get out of that nice E as well to push off the Hecarim. They're going to have to trundle, uh, send out a missing ping. It's looking like they're having a feeling that the trundle's up there in the top side. Hecarim able to you take out Syndra's flash. He's going to start off with the scuttle. Trundle will be going for his scuttle on the top side. No first bloods yet. Both teams here in the bot side going to be able to hit the level 3 pretty much simultaneously. Um, Kaisa with a slight CS lead. Sending out a little bit of harass, but Leona wants to go for the fight. But this is a Hecarim that had just finished the first clear. It's going to be Zayn taking very low. Could be the first blood. It's going to be falling here to Kaisa. Boom bang going for a having to flash out because of AJ's flash auto taken very low to only about 60 health just gonna have the first blood there given to the Kai'Sa Blitzkrieg wants to go for a gank of his own he's gonna go for a flash auto is that gonna be able to fall through oh my lord sizzling pizza uh, that's gonna be a big unlucky uh, from the trundle there as he tried to go for the dive on the York no help unfortunately there from true to help anything out it's going to be backing with the top side pushing. Um, MF coming back with only a long sword. Meanwhile, Kaisa with her BF. Unfortunate start there for the Hawks. But MF did hold on to the summoner, so um, unfortunately, I think the communication needed to be from Syndra coming in that, you know, scuttles being taken by Hecarim downside, watch out for the gank instead of Leona, committing her abilities already initially onto the Nautilus, made her unable to protect, but IIT quick to reply with their own, going in with a lot of damage on Rewa. It's going to be taken very low, and 
IIT now on the driver's seat in terms of this pushing to spot side here. It's going to be a ward able to be spotting out the trundle. Hagfram lying here in wait. No ward to see him. Divine with the E on his own is going to be able to push the Zareth out as he charges it. Taken low, but still able to be just fine. Trundle kind of wandering about as they know where he is through that ward. It's going to be starting things off in a little bit of engage here. Control ward will spook him off though. Syndra. Back to about a core, a little bit of a third of a health here now. With a slight CS lead of her own, actually, now that, I, now that I'm looking at it. Nice couple of dodges, gets the cannon minion. Nice job. True now at a level advantage of his own, level 5 versus level 4, is able to chunk down uh, Sizzling Pizza. True actually throwing out the ult, trying to see if the York wants to do anything about it, but he used his flash earlier against the Trundle Dive. I really uh, not sure if she's going to have enough health to look on the dive on her own. And Trundle taking a lot of time roaming about in the, ju uh, in the jungle is going to actually be in a level deficit as opposed to this Hecarim, but Hecarim coming down now has the assistance of his team, but Boombang does not care. He wants to go for the fight no matter what. If I'm coming down, you're coming down with me, and unfortunately, that commitment not able to work out for uh, the Hawks there as uh, FSU pushes the lead down to 3 0 with about a 1k gold lead. That back will be able to get Kaisa some much needed items. Level 6 now for. Oh, wait, we already talked about it earlier when she hit the level 6 ult. My bad. True. Showing a little bit of damage here off of off of Sizzling Pizza. One more auto will do it. A nice 1v1 there. Giving life back to the Hawks. Putting them on the finally on the board with a kill. And Trundle taking advantage of that Hecarim uh, assistance that he uh, helped out for the bot lane by taking the Trun uh, taking the first, uh, first dragon. Bow Drake in IIT's favor. Red buff is finally going to spawn back here for the second time. Both jumblers going for it simultaneously. Things coming out as they have the idea that the Nautilus is lurking about. And, um, yeah, level 6 is going to be uh, here in Hecarim's favor. Trundle, not there yet, will need a de almost a full, full uh, level behind it. Actually, hold on. I really have chased all the way back to her jungle, falls d down to the Yorick will be able to start taking this blue buff for his own, and that's just going to continue to push FSU Savage uh, above, like I said, almost a full level above the uh, above the Trundle. Could actually be two levels, I'm afraid to say it. Uh, I'm scared. Yeah, this is... could do it. But, let's creak. Trying to take these minions for himself as Syndra had to go back all the way for her uh, lost chapter. Bot side here for the uh, is gonna have Kaisa be level six first, and doesn't look like IIT's in a position to really look for any fights as of yet. And uh, I'll check my. Alright, level 6 here, finally hit by Zayn. Sorry for the delay, I was trying to switch to make sure I can see Twitch chat in case if anyone's talking to me. Uh, nice little Q damage there to land on the Kai'Sa. Always deceptive, actually. It's like very, it's very fun to land at when you get that ankle just right. Trundle will finally hit level 6 as he's clearing out the wolf camp. Uh, taking a quick look around, even with the, uh, you know, 4 kill leads. Still seeing some gold leads across here for IIT, I think. Yeah, Aurelia just hovering at above, uh, a little bit above there. Really, the big one is for the Trundle and Hecarim, so Trundle's definitely going to have to try to catch back up with some team fights. but the flash initiation from the, from Boombang, he wants to go for the 1v1. He's going to be able to get it on Kai'Sa. Well played. It's going to be continuing the fight here with MF Spray, her entire ult on the members. One more auto can do it. He's going to be able to hold on. MF just barely holds on. But it's going to fall finally to the uh, Trundle. Uh, it's going to excuse me. Going to finally fall down to the uh, 
Nautilus. Trundle dare to clean it up. Able to get himself some kills. Nice dare. Boom bang committing himself for those one v ones. We saw that happen twice now, actually. In fact, uh, true kind of poking things out, looking like he wants to go for this one v one. Trading a lot of damage here, but it's the uh, maiden there doing enough there. But true is still able to clear it through. Nice play once again from true. Two and zero oh in terms of the matchup. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't give that Yorick 1v1 in the blue jungle an actual kill because his Hecarim was there as well. He was chased all the way through his own jungle. In terms of lane matchup, I think True coming out ahead here. And now MF finally with some kills to her name as well is going to finally not have to take the backseat anymore in terms of the uh, in terms of this early game laning phase. Divine's going to be spotting out the Hecarim as he goes for the scuttle might want to be looking for an engage he is calling pings for true to come down there is going to be starting it off divine's going to be coming down with true here they look like they can maybe start a fight york is going to be inside the jungle but a lot of members taken very low here forcing true to flash all the way out divine taking a decent amount of damage one more but the ult expires not going to be able to uh get any kills through that skirmish. FSU Savage though, still on the hunt for uh, four members and Divine walking out here. It's looking like he's gonna finally be taken down. Oh, has actually taken it back, forcing a flash out. Hecarim wants it, he's got his ult available. It's going to be used. Now Trundle in a tight spot, level seven versus level nine. I'm not sure who's gonna be able to, if he's gonna be able to get out of this one. A lot of members being taken out. The damage, though, not quite there to take down Blitzkrieg. Pings here from True as he knows that, recognizing that the York is missing, but York is going to be trying to take the Shelly uh, for himself. Have some more pressure there on the top side for those objectives. And IIT, though, looking like they made Kaisa back, actually. So, IIT, you know, suffering a couple of losses there in the early early game but now here with about 12 minutes pushing the gold lead back up to only 300. It's going to be Yorick taking the Shelly first Eye of the Herald for himself and that's going to be the first one. Uh, but all in the meantime, oh god Blitzkrieg, gonna have to use the smite just to be able to secure himself with just a little bit of help but another dragon there in IIT's favorite ocean one falling out. It's going to be Scuttle falling out here, oh my lord. Syndra instantly makes the Yorick pay for trying to dare touch my mid lane, but uh, Harold will not be enough to take down the first tower. Irelia, though, is going to be able to take, with just a minute left of turret plating, take us down to almost just one left. True getting a nice little stun there onto the Hecarim, but Hecarim with no ult using it early on the Syndra, not going to be seeing any more happen as they now know the information that Hecarim is on the top side. Whew. Much more. It's a pretty exciting game. Gold lead still really close here to 13 minute mark. Can be anyone's game, honestly. Um, Trundle now finally coming out. Uh, is still significantly behind from the Hecarim. At least like a... Yeah. Oh my goodness. 1.3k gold deficit. So uh, definitely getting outshone by the... Uh, by the Hecarim, but, you know, redeeming factor is taking the dragon. So being a team player is more important, dude. I, I respect it. You know, not everyone can, not all of us can style our way through, uh, through these games, but Boobang wants to go for the fight. He's going to be able to get that slow. The Leona E able to capture the members, but IIT looking like they're coming out just ahead. One more auto will do it. The ult from Nautilus too late to be able to prevent the damage. Zayn turning on here with that Essence Reaver, turning on with that damage. Nice initiation. IIT not afraid and going into these situations with no fear. It's going to be a couple of trades shove it going out here. Blitzkrieg taken very low. It's going to likely fall down to the Zerath. True now coming into the game. Divine taking only to about half health is 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 getting uh fucking shredded by uh, the Yorick <laughs> by the Yorick minions. But despite all of that action there with three top uh, IIT able to take advantage of their two v two situation and Carmel man going all the way balls deep into the blue. Blue jungle taken down. Divine final. Uh, finally, I guess. FSU finally replies into kind with taking the tier one mid. True wants to go for a dive of his own. He's gonna looking like he's gonna be able to get it, 
barely fallen through, but IIT uh, FSU wants to reply. He's f going going to have to walk all the way back to his tower just to be on the safe side. Turret plating finally falling down here. Both mid and jungle here onto the top side. IIT has opened up the bottom half of the map, while FSU has opened up right straight down center. Mm. We'll have to see. IIT doing a little bit of a lane switch, though. It's going to actually be the TP channel by the Yorick. So they're interesting call here from uh, from FSU. I don't know if he did that. I don't think he did that knowing that IIT was going to switch like that on him. So good, uh, good macro here from IIT. With the bot side open now true, I'm going to be pushing here through, uh, through the top and taking this tower to himself, perhaps. You know, clearing out the tri bush. It's going to be Sizzling Pizza taking very low, forcing out his flash, in fact. Oh my lord, Boom Bang going all the way in, forcing two flashes there from the Hawks. It's going to be the damage fall coming in through here. Oh my. This bot lane is ready to put this put IIT onto their backs because I am here for it. Oh, nice. Divine in the meantime, coming back here with Blitzkrieg. Taking advantage of its top side and pretty much I really going uncontested here as he goes and puts himself in a 2v1 situation. True. Gonna have to try to do what he can to get out. I don't th think he's gonna be able to hold on and no he will not. Finally falls down. Hecarim and Zareth able to take advantage of Irelia being inside the jungle. Now IIT rotating around here for the mid tier 1 to finish it off. And actually having a gold lead to their name, 500 gold. You know, it's the Hecarim that's the big boy. That's going to be the real contest to see if, what they can do about it. Boom Bang is still <laughs> wants to be going for the... Is that E connected? I don't think... He, I think he would just have died. So honestly, it's better that it didn't land. I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, Zayendo doing a nice little bit of sidestepping Dodge's three abilities. Yorick, Wall, Zareth, Q, and his stun. Uh... Alrighty. Trundle finally taking the, oh my goodness, it's mega behind with the three level deficit, but still, you know, team player. Uh, Mountain Drake's going to be spawning in the next 15 seconds, so IIT's members got, or looking to go for that rotation. FSU spot lane finally coming here with a back. Kaisa with the Storm Razor, but MF is going to be able to have those numbers advantage, uh, excuse me, damage advantage with the BF and pickaxe to her name. Uh, Leona with I think almost all ults available here on both sides actually yeah yeah so looking like a pretty big bl bloodbath coming in for this dragon who's going to be coming out onto the top it's going to be a three beautiful man stun here for IIT starting things off as they try to finally going to make Kaisa uh, the Emma pay for it though as two members die but IIT members 3 versus 2 situation. Kaisa will finally fall the Maiden trying to suck whatever health that they can. But that that stun lock from Leona, such a good play. Hold on, I'm going back to that. Let's rewatch that. Uh, it's like a, that, that vision control that they had there. This reach right here, look at this. Dward, they don't catch it out. 3 members centered right along that stun with the Divine E. Yeah, for that damage to fight, MF gets almost the full extent of her ult out of it. She instantly falls to the Hecarim Kaisa, which is expected, but being able to use her ult to be able to get the damage through first is sorry, is advantageous. Zareth tries to run away, falls to I really had to flash himself out, so... Um, yeah. Well played there for the Hawks. Um, Kaisa didn't use her flash. I don't really have any comments on that, but... Whew. Alrighty. So, it's going to look like IIT will be able to take control of this drag. York's going to be all the way inside IIT's uh, jungle. Not sure what he's delaying himself for instead of just channeling it straight back, but uh, I don't think anything else is going to come from that. So, finally comes down. Going to be able to take the uh, now three drakes to their name. So, IIT, again, objective control. Uh, two turrets here. Uh, three drakes. And a good fight there. It's going to have them now no longer just staying even for the gold putting themselves into a 2k gold lead and having sending out pings now for the second herald or shelly or whatever else as people call it now it's like honestly i don't keep track but fun thing about leona 
That ult cooldown is very generous as it's already back up. So IIT, if they want to be going for that engage, it's going to be at the ready. Trundle will be able to grab the... Oh, no, Leona. Ah! Okay. He's going to live through that. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, going to be two members there for IIT backing. Looking like MF wants to be grabbing this red buff for herself. Syndra will not have a tier 1 mid to help her out. Takes a little bit of a poke from the Zareth. Zayn here to capture back that wave. Yeah, uh, slight lead here for Syndra in terms of the gold. Yeah, now MF, those 2v2 plays, is paying off its dividends by having her definitely ahead from the Kai. So true, getting a couple of nice 1v1s has him ahead. It's really just a jungle difference. Uh, but Sizzling Pizza is going to be caught out here. It's going to be taken all uh, to making New York pay for having to go for that invade. Zareth, no ult here to go look for any kind of potential kill onto uh, onto the MF as she was taken a little bit low, but she's going to have to red buff just to help regen herself right back up. It's going to be now the second Herald being spawned off here in IIT's favor as they look to take it and take down and finally open up the base on the tier 1 mid, but it's going to be a nice stun there from the Leona. Nice flank there with no flash as he used it right earlier. And uh, FSU is left to roam like chickens as uh, they spend three members down there to try to take out the Irelia. And still the Herald is, continues to make progress onto this inhib. It's gonna finally fall. Oh, it could actually get one more. Oh, no, no, no. York will actually take it down before it gets that far. But IIT will pay back in kind by taking down that first inhib. Hecarim still taking a lot of time just to go finish off a couple of more extra waves for CS. Trundle chunking himself at the at the turret. Still three levels behind, actually. Um, but again, team player. Uh, nice dive there from Divine E. It's going to follow through. It's going to be able to get the hook. But that damage from the MF is going to chunk the Nautilus. Only to about half health. And IIT is going to follow it up with a TP here from Chu. They want to be continuing to push to advantage, force them to respond. IIT pinging that these super minions are available. FSU is going to have to address it with a back. Look, pinged possibly for Baron, perhaps? Not sure. IIT could have the potential to go for the back. And I realized I didn't switch back to my items. But it's going to be a Hecarim face checking, in fact, the uh, three members of IIT ready to respond. And he will finally fall down. No shutdown gold to his name this time, though. But his death will give a little bit of time for Blitzkrieg to catch back up in terms of XP. A ping coming here for Baron. Do they dare risk it? Members of uh, FSU finally respawning. They're checking. He sends out the uh, miracle check. And unfortunately, that's going to put him on a CD for about a minute. Yeah. Cracking open the base here with the inhib is keeping a couple members here rooted down past these gates, so they don't want to be looking for anything yet, but um, I really is going to continue to push her advantage uh, on top of this York by just clearing out a couple of these camps here from the Hecarim, so that'll continue to help push things in IIT's favor. As we get into the 22 minute mark with still only about a 3k gold lead, you know, it's still anyone's game, honestly. I think it's really... Uh, this next big team fight can really set the pacing if, if it's a point of no return, if, if uh, FSU loses it, or give some more breathing space here for for uh, FSU if they're able to pull it off. All kind of really depends. Syndra is going to be kind of a, everyone's really spread out here, but it's going to be York being seen by the Leona. Leona, with her flash available, is going to be taking a lot of damage, but I really coming in here for the flank. MF damage is going to be able to come through. Syndra able to take off the Hecarim and IIT looking like they're coming out ahead in this lead. Trundle using his pillar to really nice way to split off the members, actually forcing the Zera to flash right through the Raptor pit. IIT coming out ahead, only having the MF fall. Looking like it's going to be the fourth dragon as the Mountain Drake spawns, and that's going to be two mountains. That's going to make them clean right through the Baron like butter. And again, yeah, the, the focus is the MF, I agree, but... You know, True able to dive right through their backline and provide enough of a harass that they ha they can't... They have all of these balls to their face, all of these sunlight to their swords to their face. Everything is, is coming in here at once with all guns firing here for IIT as they want to go for the fight right whenever they can, honestly. 
Taking a little bit of damage here. It's going to be I really just going to dodge where she can. Nice little sidestep. Nice little sidestep. I think you only landed one. So, in fact, with the four dragons, you get that mountain element buff. I forget what it is because it doesn't actually tell me. But hold on, um, give me where's an IIT member? Does it read it out here for me? Yeah, mountain dragon soul becomes shielded for 200 plus uh, almost 300 health and what else? After avoiding damage for five seconds. All right, so yeah, nice shield, which will help them for the Baron. Uh, Hecarim's lying in wait, trying to see if IIT wants to risk going for it, but he's got a nice flank angle here if they want to do it. They don't have vision on this Hecarim coming in here through the river. Now they will as he's spotted by this ward, for sure. MF Zayn's going to be taking out this control ward here from, uh, from them. Blitzkrieg going to be going for the Baron. Uh, blast plan to get him away from that. And now they have they hold vision control of this uh, of this Baron. Oh no, Divine. Uh, Divine a little bit spooked, but it's going to be the thing starting off with Sizzling Pizza taken down once again. Unfortunately, caught out. No one from his team there to respond as Irelia continues to push forward. Uh, we're going to have looking like one more wave of supers coming in through. I think. Oh no no, it's, it responds now. This is a regular wave from minions. I called it. Okay. Um, IIT though is going to be making their first approach with the Baron, with the Mountain to help their way through it, uh, with the shielding, a little bit of that MR damage resistance, Divine though and Boom Bank are going to try to do what they can to do it. It's going to be a two-man Baron in fact actually, but IIT can have the, has the ability to just ignore that damage straight off and go for that 1v1. The damage here coming in from Boom Bank, from Shu, forcing the AJ to flash right out. Uh, nice E there from Boom Bank. Uh, but nobody dared to respond as of yet. Uh, and all in the meantime, the two men from Trundle and MF able to take the Baron buff for themselves. So when four members with that Baron buff able to definitely look at some split push, maybe a 1-3-1 approach or just straight up smash through the gates. We'll have to see. Uh, it is true going to be coming out here on the top side. Looks like it anyway. Can't tell. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, let's see, it's gonna be Blitzkrieg now finally caught back, catching back up with the heck room. You know, only a level behind now, but with the team play, you know, despite the heck room early game, that's not going to be enough in this setting as we're kind of now into that late game phase where MF, two, two and a half items to her name, you know, it's, it's gonna be... A decent amount of work that FSU has got with with uh, now that their mid is cracked open. Irelia is coming up here. Looks like a one three one 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 and four maybe. They're trying to FSU tries to do what they can to delay, but it's going to actually be a Hecarim falling straight in through here. FSU, I don't think you're going to be savage enough to get the kill here. Saying barely holding it on. It's not going to land. They don't have the vision on it, but they're going to need the health for it. MF can actually kill you, uh, excuse me, Nautilus can kill, but the uh, the uh, Mountain Soul coming in through, giving a helpful little bit of a shield there. And the red buff is going to help heal her right back out, so she will be just fine. Actually has a stopwatch as well, just to, just in case if you got super spooked. And angle f attacks from all different sides come in here. FSU doesn't know how to decide, it's going to be starting off to engage with uh, clearing out the Nautilus. True here collapses here onto... The Kaisa Rewa has to ult right back out. Another inhib will fall here. Three inhibs, perhaps. One here. Uh, second one here on the top lane. And yeah, IIT looking like they're going to be closing out this game with game one here. 10k Goldie. Oh my god. Oh my lord. Ah. Uh, another flash. I heard at least three flashes right there. That's kind of five seconds. But yeah, GG's there to, uh, to IIT as they take a pretty big game one well played there from true for sure with the 10 and 3 um play there 10 and 3 yeah did a ton of damage and yeah pretty much made that yorick unable to function in top lane unfortunate start there from trundle but with his team to help him back up with the uh, objectives in mind helping out for those dragons i mean still able to pull his worth and yeah 
difficult struggle there for MF and Leona in the early game, but able to pull through and pull off some 2v2s on their own. So well played. Alright, I don't think I get an end game screen because it's spectate. That doesn't work like that. Um, so we're going to just actually jump ourselves right into game two. Give me a quick second. I will. Uh, yeah, I don't get a spectate screen. Um, so team one score will be 1-0 and o there for uh, IIT. And then let's get ourselves into game two. Uh, give me a quick second to move a little few things around. I think it's going to be IIT 1-0 here. Um, I'm going to just throw a hazard guess that they switch sides. But you're not actually obligated in Seawall or CSL. You just you you just got to pick your side, technically, um, if I remember right. I'm pretty sure that rule still stands. All right, let's pull up game two. Game two is which file? It's the... All right, 352, 352. Give me a quick second chat. Alright, 352, here we go. Let's get this game going. Alright, so what we've got here, it's going to, yeah, be IIT onto the red side. It's going to be Sizzling Pizza, Darius on, on the Darius, FSU Savage now on Olaf, Galio with Greywa, Jin on the cheese, I mean cheese on the Jin, <laughs> and uh, AJ on uh, the Thresh. Meanwhile with IIT, we got True on Fiora, Blitzkrieg on Hecarim now, take, try, looking like he wants to give FSU a taste of their own medicine, and Divine on the Corky, MF with Xan once again, and now Boom Bang on the Morgana. If I had to bet, I'm pretty sure they banned the Leona, just because, yeah, Boom Bang's Leona, like, no fear. Even even if it's a bad play, he's going to do it. That That's what I respect, especially. Uh, bro, uh, Olaf will land an axe right to the face, but that's going to be all there is to it. Oh. <laughs> It's like, why aren't you doing anything? Well, I didn't level anything, buddy, and uh, we didn't want to fight, so. Alrighty. Looking like IIT might want to be doing a red buff clear as well. I guess that's the thing with Hecarim. I don't play enough jungle to actually know these things. I need a co-caster with me in the future to actually commentate on this kind of stuff. Uh, Alright, let's bring up the lobby title thing to make things look better, and... Um, all right, I think I'm good to go. Oh, interesting how the scene between spectate was different. I, I don't think it's normally like that. All right, so Corky versus Galio. I think that matchup Corky wins because it's it's what it's percent damage of his passive works out as uh, magic damage, right? You know, so. 80%. Yeah, so if Galio has his W and he levels that first, I mean, the shield could help, but, you know, just in a marksman marksman approach, I think Corky just naturally has the advantage early game. We'll see. Or not, as Daddy Divine takes a little bit of damage and it's going to be running right into FSU Savage. Ignite going to come through. No more follow-up, though. One more turret shot could have been dangerous, but true... Going for a little bit of back and forth. Darius able to land the autos as opposed to the uh, engage. But now Fiora trying to pay back in kind with the level 2 advantage. Taking it back. And uh, Doran's shield is actually what's going to be equipped by uh, the... Ooh, nice repost there. That's what it's called, right? Whatever is your flexibility. So... Push into CS lead where he can, but Olaf coming around here through the tribe, which it is going to be spotted by True. He knows something is up. Uh, and Hecarim here finishing up the Krugs will be there to watch the Olaf in sight. Maybe trying to delay the members, but it's going to be True falling in here a little bit for an engage. And commits for the back, so it's actually going to be, could be true, going in for that 1v1. And man, if I was FSU, I would be mad. <laughs> How dare you finish that recall. And the funny thing is that Fiora didn't even know that the Olaf was, like, backing there. So, like, that just makes it all the more bitter, unfortunately. 
It's going to be the TP Doe expended here from the Darius. He's going to come back with the Ruby Crystal for a little bit of health. Probably to just last himself under that Fiora Harass. And True has not backed yet, so he's... Once that cannon, I know it. He's setting the sights for it, but... Oh god, please don't die for a cannon minion, dude. That's just sad if you do. No! He, he died for the fucking cannon. I know he did. I know he did. Like... <laughs> Oh, uh, that's unlucky. Unfortunately, not able to time the back correctly. He's going to have to Fiora suffer a little bit, but comes back with double longsword. Nice little knock up there. It's going to be getting to Hecarim, taking on the Galio. The Divine is going to have to use to ignite Rewa, able to barely survive. And Blitzkrieg, not going to be having the damage follow through. It's actually going to be forcing FSU to Savage to uh, flash uh, just in order to secure that. So, alrighty. FSU taking the lead early once again. Uh, Boom Bang throws out the Q. Not going to be able to land it, though. Um, staying pretty even between uh, between both sides here, for sure. Oh, Boom Bang throws out a Black Shield preemptively. Doesn't trust himself to dodge it. <laughs> dodge the Thresh Hook. But then again, I don't like Thresh Hooks that much either. Ooh, nice little Q there. Thresh will throw out his Lantern, but the wave is pushing. Fiora is looking at another 1v1 here onto uh, Darius. And looking like it's going to be able to get it for himself. One more Q will do it. Nice follow-up from Chu. 2-0 now. 2-1, excuse me. Oh, to his name. It's going to be Hecarim coming here for the ability. Oh my god. So they're looking... Okay, so they're using the flashes just to trade it out, but it's going to be landing it on Jin. That damage is going to come through. Nice hook onto the Hecarim. One more auto will be able to do it. Close call there from IIT, but good lord. <laughs> the, the flash in place. <laughs> the flash just, just for the flex uh, for Morgana there. So uh, I guess they were just trying to find... I guess he just wanted to find the angle to, to get that Q for sure. But good on IIT to make sure that they coordinated who to go on for sure. Divine not having the bestest of times here in the mid lane as he did fall. He's going to only have a uh, Mana Crystal and Longsword to help sustain him. Well, he got the Hunting Pots too. Uh, not Hunting Pots, the uh, corruption, Corrupting Potion is the name for it, my bad. Mm, just trying to put as much harass as he can as Rewa finally hits level 6 now. So, a little bit untraditional, but it's going to be Fiora now with a steady CS lead and a Tiamat to boot. It's going to be pretty much at advantage now to split push at her mind, at her pleasure. Uh, it's going to be though. No. Rewa unable to. Uh, it's actually going to be, yeah, Rewa able to secure the. Uh, oh my. Rewa able to secure the dragon, it looked like, I think, right? And then uh, members here from IIT making, paying back in kind, though. Zayn taken very low. It's going to be more damage falling through. Zayn turning on here. Nice bunch of kills here after that dragon. So Ocean Drake does go to FSU, but at what cost? It's a cost of almost four kills, I think. And giving some to Corky so that'll help him against the uh, Galio for sure. And MF as well. Perfect KDA so far. So nice play. Nice dodge on the flash. Uh, flash on the threat hook. And still able to land autos. Once again, level 7 versus level 6 Fiora. He's got the ult. He's going to start things off. Nice parry to slow things down. And once again, a 1v1 that Sizzling Pizza cannot handle, unfortunately. It's going to be Gallo. He's going to go for the Hex Proto Belt, right? It's the name for it. So uh, with that, Hex Tech and Kindle Garn, yeah. And Corky has not backed yet after those kills, actually, I just noticed. So, summonerless bot lane, IIT making note of that. Olaf is going to be here on the top side. Any kind of calls for help here for Darius? Is, 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 or is Darius just going to take the edge of it? E shield will not be enough as they force themselves to ult right out. As Morgana has to use the ult, it's not going to be able to do enough, though. She's going to be taken much lower, and no health pots either to help her out.
Thresh here lying in wait in bush. No wards on it. Could be looking for the angle right here. It is going to be caught up by the MFE, so there you go. Nice. FSU trying to look to see if they can spot out the Hecarim jungle, but he's going to be there up in the tri bush, looking like he can just continue to help push Fiora's lead up wherever he can. Going to start to engage where he can. It's going to be the ult that carries through and forces the Darius to flash out. So well played there once again. You know, Blitzkrieg doing a much better job of staying even with FSU's Savage, and uh, and that could just be the Savage's credit in terms of just not being able to help out his laners as much. We saw him come twice for the Corky to help out the Galio, and it is paying in kind. Uh, you know, Galio's got some kills to his name, but the CS lead is just I think just due to Corky's just range ability, you know, able to farm safely, right? Boom bang throws Q out into the unknown. And uh, you see what I did there? Uh, but not gonna be able to land it. Corky lying in wait. It's going to be baiting a Morgana. She doesn't have a stopwatch though, but she does have the uh, assistance of Zayn here. D Divine Daddy looking for some kills. Hecarim getting the double kill and potentially well, no, and will get a ton of turrets in in uh, in response. True, going for another one v one. This Darius is not having a fun day. Uh, and chunks him straight down to half health. IIT in that exchange from those kills, able to get themselves two plates, maybe one more here actually with uh, that falling line. Divine with a nice little. Uh, dodge to get himself right out of the uh, range of the Galio taunt. What's it called again? Valkyrie. Yes, I knew it. Okay. I was thinking it in my mind. Uh, Alright, three turret plate. Three turret platings there for MF. How does he... Wait, how does he just know? This is... This is actually nuts. In... But, you know, all heroes will finally fall, so it's going to be... Uh, Rewa using his ult to save the police. Okay. Nice. There you go. Alright, so Boom Bank here finally helped things out. It's going to be Olaf. Unable to help that Galio out. But we'll be able to get a scuttle for it, I guess. So. Uh, now in the 11 minute mark, it's going to be IIT leading things off with a 4k gold lead and in the kills. But Dragon is going to be spotting in the next 15 seconds. It's going to be a. Cloud Drake, so that'll help with the CD reduction, I think. Yeah, that'll be pretty good, I guess, for uh, for IIT's comp for sure. Ping's coming out here for it. There is going to be a ward to spot it out at first. No control wards here in IIT's possession. Uh, and actually, Spell Thief's Edge hasn't been upgraded yet from, uh, from the members. Damage going to come through. Smite able to secure thing secure it for uh, for IIT well played and it's going to be the infernal uh, that's going to be giving us the map buff MFQ instantly pops off that Jin by almost a third of his health honestly and broken hold on but inside the blue buff with that map opening it's going to be Divine able to secure the blue buff, but at what cost? It's going to be, in fact, the cost of the Hecarim. Ooh, nice flash there to get away from it. Yeah. Part of, part of the... Oh, hold on. The E... Morgana's going to have to force herself to flash out. Thresh is going to try to follow that up. Divine, in fact, going to have to flash out for himself as well. MF ch uh, channels her ult. Able to get the Thresh looking like a two for one here in favor for FSU so far in this skirmish as they were able to get the Hecarim earlier as he was helping leash that blue buff. Jin having to flash over in fact I think. Corky barely able to get out with the skin of his teeth actually. I think he tried to flash forward to Corky. Alright. I didn't note it earlier but... Gonna be IIT pushing themselves here a minute left in the turret. Might be able to get just one more plate. Olaf will be back now, though, with no ult available, but is available for a gank of his own. This is looking looking like a two v three potential situation. 
the spell shield not going to be enough actually to fight their way through it. They're going to have to force themselves. It's going to be stopwatch here on to Zayn. He's going to be able to get that damage through. The final force shot from Jin following up through and getting 700 gold. Or, no, 400? I, I saw, I thought I saw 700. It's going to be actually 400 gold there. It's going to be Divine diving himself right into there fearlessly. Taking all of that burn damage here from FSU Savage. It's going to be actually trying to take the autos there, but that Jin's not going to be strong enough. Rocket to the face will help things out. 10 seconds left. Hecarim trying to get whatever turret plating that he can get before it finally expires. And that will be the end of it all. So at 14 minute mark, all turrets still holding here. So, you know, this game is still uh, still in anyone's favor, honestly. As long as, as long as they can stop the bleeding from that Fiora, you know, FSU has a chance. No MR from the Galio is going to be able to be doing a decent amount of damage. And again, you know, Corky's MR conversion, uh, excuse me, AP conversion, MR conversion will, uh, is practical there for against, uh, to go for a little bit of a lane switch as Corky tries to opt for the 1v2, which you could do, honestly, in these kind of settings. But it's going to be a nice little dodge there on Reiwa to d avoid that MF, uh, the Morgana Q. Blitzkrieg hunting his way around here is going to be spotting the blue buff. Uh, Olaf is uh, taking down the MF. I didn't even see him on the map. My bad. Let's take a quick back. So, okay, yeah, I saw, I was commenting that the Galio was doing a nice dodge. I saw the Hecarim doing the blue buff on his own. And then, okay, here's how. Alright, so just knock up there from Galio damage. Taunt there, another double kill. Nice play. So. Two kills for a blue buff. Not really the best of odds that you would normally see. But what does they pay back in kind? And they're going to pay back in kind with a 1v2 situation that Divine's able to pull through. God damn it, I can't. Oh, he, okay, so he lands it. Valkyrie's away, lands some damage. Uh, nice little bit of dodging. Ignite damage will fall off. Oh, misses the four shot. That's unfortunate. Okay. So that happened. Mm. All right, let's take a look at Twitch chat if anybody's saying anything. Nope, just a couple of viewers. Uh, all right. I'm gonna be Olaf here just to hold on to the tier one mid, and actually, still at the fifteen minute mark, no towers have. Fallen, right? It was one of those strange games where, like, probably by the time the first tower falls, it's like the end of the game because you're just gonna clear all three of them <laughs> right after, you know? Um, pings coming out. Dragon going to be spawning fairly soon. It's going to be an infernal. And with uh, IIT and FSU one for one in terms of turrets, they're going to be spotting out that this. Harold is going to be starting to be Leash Fior is coming around. Do they want to go for this fight? It's going to be taken to 1.5k health. He will have a spike for it. Olaf will be able to finish it. Val Divine Valkyries away from it. Any more from it though? They're going to look like they want to go for an engage. Reywa is going to be coming in here. Looking at a 1v2 situation here. Shu wants to be going for it. He's going to be diving straight for it. One more R will be able to do it. It is going to be able to get the kill onto the onto there. It's going to have a little bit of healing there. Next target is going to be called out. It's going to be Reywa finally falling here. It's going to be FSU Savage falling as well. Nice 2v3 play there from the Hawks. And on all of that time, IIT able to secure the Infernal Drake for himself. It's got to be the first turret now, right? It's just got to be. First support item not even completed yet for either supports, but eh, whatever. One more, one more, one more, one more. There it will finally go. First turret. Uh, oh, actually, I take it back. There was a turret that fell earlier. I just uh, was too dumb to talk about it. My bad. Um, stunned there from the Corky. Ah! All right. You know, I will say that, despite 
Corky having uh, that initial kill, being killed initially in that early early time, early game, but he has not died since, and he in fact has a crap ton of uh, shutdown gold on his, onto his name as well, so, you know, something's working. I think Botling prefers to flash your plays, you know, so give him that. And actually puts him at a very sizable gold lead on top of it as well. So, Divine with his package, with his blue buff, is going to start zooming around the map, looking for any kills, looking for any objectives that they can go for, but with the map almost opened up at this point, with only tier 1 top to fall, you know, unless IT does some strong fighting, strong 5 banning, you know, it's going to still be a little ways yet. It's going to be the fight starting off Corky's package, going to be creating a line here between the members as he's flashing in from behind. Corky going for the back line here as it's going for one for one here. Gonna have to force his heal off. Can Olaf finish it off? He's gonna have to try to Valkyrie away. The nice route is gonna follow it through though. The wolves are fighting him. The MF channeled her ult. Darius was not there in time. But trying to go for a dive. A lot of slapdash fighting going on throughout here. Trudo putting this in a 3v2 situation essentially. Flashing it for the Corky. Infernal blue buff will spawn out. It's going to have to almost practically one for one. True, only the member left alive now. Not going to be enough, and he's going to be a big boy. Instantly repost, uh, excuse me, instantly just cues, dashes in, fights, finds some more kills to it, and I think that's a four for four. So despite the the kill, the gold lead, you know, FSC is still showing signs of life with the. Uh, able to still walk out even, you know, in terms of these kind of trades that they're going for. But in the meantime, it's going to be finally if you're finally opening up opening up the uh, the game here with all tier 1s now removed for FSU. Olaf with the timer is going to have to actually force the Herald now to finally go on its merry path here to the bot lane. Uh, Fiora has a TP if she wants to actually respond to it, but... Uh, looking like it's going to be IIT that IIT's MF and Morgana that will take the responsibility of that. Pink's coming out that they want to try to see if they can get something in kind. Morgana's going to have to make some fast running here. She's going to have to force her flash to get out of it. But in the meantime, you know, Dragon's not going to be spawning for a while, so it's still got time. Zayn does not want to show his face yet to the uh, to the buffs uh, to the to the Herald yet, so. It's fine with another nice little Valkyrie dodge, but <sighs> Harold will finally now start pushing its way. It's going to be able to crack open this base for a tier one for sure. IIT will concede that point. And Fiora now finally coming down. A minute left for another Infernal actually again to come down. Nice another Valkyrie to get away from Kelio. Rinse and repeat. As you know it. So it's going to be things starting off here with MF channeling her ult. She will finally fall down to a Thresh auto. Jin channel going to try to channel his ult. Doesn't even land a single bullet. Tries to do what he can. Divine dashing around through the game. Fiora going in her 1v1 of her own. Going to be able to take down Dalio. It's going to be Jin falling down as well. Only Darius able to walk down. So one for four. You know, IIT coming out ahead on that trade once again. And could be actually be a one for five. I take it back. Uh. All right, forces Darius back into the gate, forcing the flash out, in fact, as well. Nice little repose to be able to secure that kill. Infernal will finally spawn as well. IIT looking like they're going to be able to secure this drag as well, and now push the gold lead to almost 8k ahead here for the Hawks. Couple of items coming through. MF on stopwatch once again. You know, every time I see her ult, I've been seeing her like ult in the center of an enemy. Like, she's just right in the middle of it. But as long as her team's there, you know, she's still able to put out some pretty good numbers, I think. Uh, that's unfortunate. Raptor will actually end up spawning, uh, end up regenerating enough health to stay alive. MF is going to be running right into an Olaf. 
Oh my. He'll be flashing himself. Okay, stopwatch is gonna be expended. Fiora here now to save the day if he can. Gonna try to fight their way through this. The damage is there. Gonna have to try to cleanse himself out of it. Can he survive? Barely going through this ult from Stife. Sizzling Pizza is gonna be going through. Some kills coming in through as well. Three kills, four kills coming in here through. But Divine with a quadra kill of his own. Oh my god. Quadra, quadra. Guys, I have a <laughs> Uh, literally, they just see the MF and then they just go guns blazing. Let's replay that, because that was fun to watch. Alright, yeah, so we saw the MF use her stopwatch. She's taken very low here. Morgana from behind the wall can't help. Only put a black shield. It's going to be all of these members falling in, but look at this package here from Quirky. This angle right here, three members of these guys are really low. It's, IIT, it's their backline that's insane. But the flay, not going to be enough damage there and prioritization and then they can ignore the gym because why he does no damage he only has an ie so yeah well played there from divine for sure well played from iit for sure uh i guess it ended up working out in the end that's the goal lead i think coming out on top as well as just the uh the map play i guess level 40 account Ooh, FSU not happy by seeing Divine on a level 40 account, but, uh, I mean, technically, I think. He has, oh, he's mad. <laughs> so, well, that seems to be unfortunate. FSU putting in some all chat displeasure there. But,. You know, if he passes background check, I don't see why he can not play. Oh my god, okay. So. We'll have to see. Map is finally going to be cracked here at the base with the inhib exposed here down mid. But IIT's setting their sights onto the Baron. It's going to be Divine and Blitzkrieg going to be starting themselves off here. Uh, Inferno will be able to help things off with that attack damage for sure. Uh, FSU not in the wiser really. Still here near their tier 1 mid. This is going to be taken very low. But the rest of his members will be there to help things out. Baron's going to be secured. And alrighty. 10k gold lead now at the 25 minute mark. Inhib exposed. Bunch of IIT members all around the map. But it's going to be Boom Bang here falling down to FSU Savage. And why are you talking in all chat in the mid game like this? This is so fucking unprofessional. If you're mad, then you report them after. You don't talk about it in all chat. Jesus, these guys. Florida, dude. Alright. At this point, I think. Uh, we'll see. Only three members here from IIT trying to crack open the gates. MF is going to be going for the red buff. So they're trying to just fight their way through this. It's going to be a nice hook landing there onto the Fiora. A couple of autos being sent out by Jin. Nice little bit of sidestepping here from True. Not going to be enough though. Forcing the flash out. True will fall. Nice play there from Thresh to keep her in place. Will be the first to fall. MF is looking like she wants to go for it next. It's going to be starting things off. Olaf coming all the way from around here, but that Olaf ult will not be enough. The flash from Jin not going to be enough. Divine will finally be able to get the kill. Only Olaf being able to walk out in that. Uh, 
And that'll be a surrender, actually, in fact, as well. So, FSU, IIT ends up taking uh, the victory with 41, 22, 58.3 to 44.5k gold. Uh, GG's, I guess, to FSU. IIT takes the victory 2 0. So, take it sells back to the pick band. Two and zero here for our Hawks today, for the Division C team and the Division A team. So we'll have to see next week what will happen uh, between these two uh, between these two IIT teams for IIT, uh, between these two teams for IIT. Uh, these are the only two teams that participate officially for Illinois Tech Esports. So um, what ended up happening for those that might be confused is like mm, normally. Uh, we went into the fall thinking we were going to have three teams, but it ended up having the A team member having a, like some roster shuffling, so they weren't able to go through. And um, the like because of that, they just ended up consolidating the two top teams together because Riot introduced a ten man uh, in C Lol this year. So we'll have to see, you know, how they do. But yeah. That'll do it for us today. Appreciate everyone stopping by if you watch this live. But again, uh, just because these two games go on simultaneously, I can't actually cast them both at the same time. We don't have another caster. In any case, Elmer Moyne, signing out. Thanks for watching today, everyone.